All right, in this video, I want to answer one of the biggest questions that I get on this channel. And that one is, how do I learn Japanese calligraphy? How do I learn to do what you do? The answer is simple. Just do it the way I do it. But let me explain. Just do it the way I do it is the universal command from teachers, parents, and other figures of authority when giving you directions on how to do something. And what I'm talking about here is imitations. Imitation is a very natural way of learning. Children do it all the time. Kids imitate other kids and adults to learn new things. So what I wanna talk about today is that concept of learning by imitating when it comes to Japanese calligraphy, but also martial arts and Zen. Now, during the learning process, creative expressions is sometimes frowned upon. The priority here is to learn the foundation where self-expression can later manifest. As learners, we are unable to build that foundation on our own. We need something to follow, something to copy, something to imitate. Now, I wanna tell you a story. As a chef, novice cooks are not allowed to cook their own creations. They need to be able to cook the same way their chefs cook. They're expected to make the dishes be exactly the same as if the chef did it himself or herself. During an event many years ago, my chef was not at the restaurant. He was busy doing other things. And I, I was the sous chef, second in command. So I was tasked with preparing and serving this really fancy dinner that's how it was happening on that night. And he didn't leave me a menu, so I had to create a menu for the night. So we did the dinner, everything went well, um, everybody was happy. And then at the end of the night, the owner of the restaurant congratulated me on a job well done. He came to me, shook my hand, and he said, nobody noticed, chef was not here today. Now I took it as a compliment, of course, and I realized that I was good at what I was doing because I was able to imitate his food in every detail that not even returning customers or even the owner could tell whether he was the one in the kitchen or not. Now we also learn Aikido the same way and most martial arts do this, is everybody sits down, the instructor stands up in front of the class, demonstrates the technique, and then everybody stands up, grabs a, grabs a partner, and you're supposed to do what he or she just demonstrate it. And if you don't do it the way the instructor showed you, you get corrected because the instructor said, no, this is what we're doing today. So you need to imitate his or her movements, right? Sand calligraphy is practiced the same way. We have a sample of the calligraphies that we are practicing. We grab a brush, we look at it, and we try to copy it. And the sand approach is sometimes even more radical because we don't spend any time instructing how to brush the characters that we're looking at, like stroke orders or composition, none of that. You grab the brush and you rely solely on your breath and your posture to wheel the brush across the paper while you try to copy what you see. The traditional way of learning Japanese calligraphy is by copying the work of Asian masters. For example, Wang Siji is the most common calligrapher that students copy. Wang Siji is a famous Chinese calligrapher from the Jin Dynasty. Because of my style and my approach to calligraphy, I copy the work mostly of Yamaoka Teshu, which was a famous Japanese swordsman, Zen master, and calligrapher from the late 19th century. Now, as you probably know, I started this path of Japanese calligraphy by copying the calligraphy of Toyota Sensei. Toyota Sensei was one of my Aikido teachers and he gave me a calligraphy that he brushed for me when I finished my training with him in the summer of 1998. That calligraphy was what I tried to imitate. I was trying to copy what he did. I was trying to do exactly the way he did it. When I started learning Japanese calligraphy formally through Maki Sensei, we started copying the work of Takasuda Chikudo, which was a famous Japanese calligraphy and scholar from the early 20th century. He's got a bunch of books that are published on calligraphy. And that's those are the texts that she used to teach me calligraphy. And that still to this day is who I copy the most because I learned how to copy his work when I was learning from her and I kind of still keep doing that same method. While we talk about copying the work of others as a form of learning, we have to caution about plagiarism because plagiarism is tricky and it can happen without you knowing it. Plagiarism, what it means is that you copy somebody else's work and you claim it as your own. So while we can copy somebody somebody else's work as a form of learning. We all do it in all forms of, in all kinds of things. We copy other people's stuff to learn. 
we cannot claim it as our own. So we always have to get credit where credit is due. We always have to say where these things come from. So you're probably asking, so how will I be able to develop my own style if all I'm doing is just imitating other people? And that is a good question. And you know, originality does not really exist. You know, we are a species that relies on evolution to keep moving forward. We're always standing on the shoulders of the people that came before us to keep moving forward. So you're never gonna have an original thought. You're never gonna have an original style of calligraphy or you're never gonna have an original style of martial art or any other things, or, uh, art or drawing or filmmaking. Any of those things is always based on something that came before and in the, on, from generation to generation that keeps moving forward. So what makes it unique, even though you're trying to imitate somebody else's work, what makes it unique is that well, you're not that person. You don't have their hands. You don't have their spirit. You don't have their life experiences. So it's always going to be different, no matter how much you try. Unless, of course, you're a trained forger, but that goes back to plagiarism, which... So I wouldn't worry too much whether like your calligraphy or anything that you are learning and you're imitating somebody else that is looking too much like that person because that's natural in the beginning and then you eventually will start to move away as your skills start to develop. Remember we said in the beginning that this is a way to build that foundation. Once you have that foundation, then self-expression can manifest. People that knew Toyota Sensei, have asked me a lot of times to brush an Aikido scroll for them so that they can hang it in their dojo. They're asking me because they see my Aikido scroll and they're like, that looks just like Toyota Sensei. I want an Aikido scroll in my dojo that feels like Toyota Sensei. I'm happy to provide that for them. He's not around anymore. He passed away, unfortunately, a long time ago. So I'm able to provide something that looks like it. It doesn't bother me because even though you put Toyota Sensei's Aikido scroll next to my scroll, yeah, they look the same, but that Aikido scroll is mine. It's never gonna be his. Inspiration is there so deeply rooted that I just cannot help it to have it come up that way. So long story short, how do I learn Japanese calligraphy? Well, the most basic thing that you can do is copy some other calligraphy that you look at. Go online, look at some Japanese calligraphy images, grab a brush and an ink and just try to copy what you see. Even if you don't know what you're doing, just try to copy what you see. Try to try to look at the every detail. Try to look at every stroke, the size, the composition, how this stroke is placed with this stroke and how the two of them are joined together in this character. Now, of course, after that, you are going to need some proper instructions. You are going to need someone who's gonna teach you how to hold the brush, the basic composition, how to read the characters, the A basic strokes, all that. So you can check out my online course. I have an online class that basically teaches all the fundamentals of Japanese calligraphy. You can try to find a teacher. If you have a teacher nearby, go to some classes, try to learn from them directly. Other instructors do mail-in uh, lessons, you can try that. But what it comes down to is no matter what route you go, whether you do online lessons, whether you, you do a teacher or you try to learn on your own, what you're going to be doing is copying other people's work. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check my online store, the link is down below and I have a bunch of my own calligraphies or all originals there for sale and as Father's Day starts to approach, there's a little incentive there so go check it out. If you want to learn Japanese calligraphy through my online lessons, check the link down below for my online course, it's called Shodo Essentials and there you will be able to learn everything that you need to know to start uh, learning Japanese calligraphy. So thanks for watching, I'll talk to you soon.